Profiles in Cinemania, Vangelis. The pantheon of modern film score composers whose works were the sound of 80s cinema contained such luminaries as John Williams and Jerry Goldsmith. Besides these giants, humbly stands Evangelos Odysseus Papathanasiu, better known as Vangelis. In a time when his contemporaries were creating lush orchestration out of vast arrays of instruments, Vangelis went a different way. In a very real sense, he was a one-man band. He had no need of the orchestra because he was able to create vast, multi-layered tapestries of sounds all on his own. He could sit down in a room full of strange electronic devices and do what others required the complete resources of a huge and fully equipped symphony hall to achieve and create sounds that were unlike anything else cinema audiences had ever heard. Vangelis began his musical career in psychedelic prog rock in the late 60s, but moved into analog synthesizers in the early 70s. Synthwave acts may be a dime a dozen nowadays, but there were scant few other composers anywhere in the world who worked in that medium at that time. In those early days, working with analog synthesizers required knowledge of advanced mathematics and an aptitude for electronics engineering, not just music theory. Because of this steep barrier to entry, Vangelis was one of only a handful. Klaus Schultz, Kitaro, Zan Michel Zar, and of course, John Carpenter. John Carpenter is fucking amazing. He's even a bigger badass than all of us in the Cinemania Society in the first place. Oh yeah, John Carpenter, the man, the badass, the living legend. But we're talking about Vangelis here. He stood above his peers because of the richness and depth of his style, which contrasted with, for example, the minimalism of John Carpenter, whose music was catchy, but simple. You keep John Carpenter's name out of your fucking mouth. Vangelis was one of the few composers who saw synthesized music as an extension of the musical tradition instead of a catchy new flash in the pan, and treated this new electronic frontier with the seriousness it deserved. The world had its first taste of synth in 1972, with Wendy Carlos's soundtrack to the Stanley Kubrick film A Clockwork Orange. Like that film itself, this new type of music was generally passed off as an oddity. As synth emerged as a genre all its own during the come down era, the mainstream continued to dismiss it as a fad. Synth? That was for aging hippies in search of a far out soundtrack to transcend their midlife crises. That was what national public radio broadcast for those hippies late at night on music from the hearts of space. But it was one aging hippie in particular who was responsible for catapulting Vangelis into public consciousness, one who had consumed billions and billions of micrograms of THC. Carl Sagan, famed astronomer and science communicator, blew America's collective minds with Cosmos in 1980. Its soundtrack was all drawn from Vangelis' albums and became the very definition of the music of tomorrow. Within months, Vangelis was getting attachments to compose other soundtracks. Vangelis' notable film scores can be counted on one hand, but they're all bangers. He won an Academy Award for his soundtrack to the 1981 film Chariots of Fire, which actually had no chariots and no fire, just a couple of dudes running really intensely on a beach. The theme for Chariots of Fire shot to the top of the pop charts and became synonymous with really intense things happening in slow motion. Even if you hadn't seen the movie, you knew that tune. It was ubiquitous. Suburban dads haltingly fumbled it out on Casio guitars in the electronic section of JCPenney. School kids sneered a cappella renditions to mock their less athletically inclined comrades. It was a pop culture touchstone for the electronic generation, the way Stairway to Heaven was for rock and roll. Revered, respected, but a bit overplayed. Even today, this song is regularly lampooned in TV and film. Where Vangelis really hit his stride was the soundtrack to Blade Runner. What John Williams did in 1977 for space opera, Vangelis did in 1982 for cyberpunk, and in so doing, helped create one of the most influential visions of the future in film history. Just as Ridley Scott had his cinematic imitators, Vangelis had his musical imitators. 
Hans Zimmer only the highest profile among them. Despite Vangelis' reputation for creating the sound of tomorrow, perversely, he became the go-to guy for historical epics. Ridley Scott returned to him in 1984 for The Bounty, a modern retelling of an 1802 mutiny. Vangelis' futuristic score boomed over a period drama where sweaty, trembling Anthony Hopkins had increasingly tense conversations with sweaty, insouciant Mel Gibson. It was as incongruous as hell, but somehow it worked. In 1992, Vangelis' signature sound again thundered under a historical epic. 1492, Conquest of Paradise had a Greek scoring for a Frenchman playing an Italian representing Spain in conquering America. Despite Vangelis' best efforts and an all-star cast that include Gerard Depardieu and Sigourney Weaver, this long-winded, ponderous apologia for one of history's greatest monsters tanked and took with it Vangelis' status as an A-lister. He resurfaced in 2004 to score Oliver Stone's Swords and Sandals flop, Alexander, but as with 1492, good music couldn't save a bad movie, and Vangelis returned to his home studio. It was a new era with new demands, and, well, that's Hollywood for you. The number of Vangelis film scores may be dwarfed by other late 20th century film composers, but his influence was unmistakable. The internet is swarming with artists busily trying to recreate his magic. Vangelis was wildly prolific in sectors apart from the silver screen. Over the course of his career, he produced more than 50 albums, occasionally in collaboration with other prog rock notables, but mostly he worked solo. Even more astonishingly, most of his tracks, even the film scores, were recorded in a single take. That's right, kids. He didn't work by carefully adding layer after previously recorded layer. He just set up all the sequences and let them rip. Vangelis was a true genius whose work defined a decade, shaped a new medium, and whose legacy has already served to inspire the generations following in his footsteps. This has been another profile in Cinemania. This episode was written by Ethan Ireland and Andy Slack and was performed by Andre Luke Martinez. Mixing and mastering by Ethan Ireland. Music by Carl Casey at White Bat Audio. Profiles in Cinemadia is a product of the Cinemania Society, LLC.